Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be investigating the price of Bitcoin based on powers of two. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. We also do have the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, if you like dubious speculation, then you're probably gonna like this video. If you don't like dubious speculation, then this probably isn't the right channel for you. So, fair warning now. This for, <laughs> even for this channel, this gets a little bit, a little bit dubious. But um, I, I did study uh, mathematics once upon a time, and, and it's fun, and, and computer science and whatnot, and, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. So, one of the things you can look at when you, when you look at the, the chart of Bitcoin is you see that it, it, it really should be looked at on a logarithmic scale. If you don't look at it on a log, if you don't look at it on a logarithmic scale, it looks something like this, and it just sort of masks everything that happened over here. But anyone who was in Bitcoin in this area knows that this was still a pretty significant area. And if you switch it to a log scale, you can see what Bitcoin accomplished in that area. Even though when you switch it back to linear, it doesn't really seem like that much. Now, one of the things we can do is we can actually look at this in powers of two. What I mean is, what if we just bend these price regions into powers of two. What does that mean? It means two to the one, two squared, two cubed, two to the fourth, two to the fifth, two to the sixth, two to the seventh, and two to the eighth, okay? Two to the one is two, right? Two squared is four. So what we notice is that the market cycle bottom for Bitcoin occurred between two to the one and two to the two. Okay, right? 2, 2K to 4K. That's more or less where the market cycle bottom was. It was right around $3,100. So right, right sort of in between there. So between $2,000 to $4,000 is where the market cycle bottom was. But then you notice we have all these other bins, two squared, two cubed, two, two to the four. And you might say, well, it seems weird that it, 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 they're all the same width because you know, you're going from two to four is a lot smaller than going from say, um, you know, 16 to 32, or 32 to 64, 64 to 128, or 128 to 256, or even 256 to 512, etc. cetera. All right, so, but again, this is a logarithmic scale, so maybe this helps you understand what a logarithmic scale is. Now, what, what I've noticed when I look at this is that Bitcoin really does like to spend some of its time shooting through some of these bins, and other times it just hangs out in them for a really long time. What I mean, is in in two squared to two cubed, and let me let me pull this up so you can see that where the prices correspond to. Between two squared and two cubed, we didn't really spend that much time in it. We just sort of went up. We we kind of came back down. We were briefly in it right there, but more or less, we did not go sideways that long in this bin. Okay, we did not go sideways very long in this bin. When it's been from two cubed to two to the four, we spent a long time in it. Like, look at all this time that was more or less spent in this region between eight to 16K. That makes a lot of sense because we know that Bitcoin, when it's going to the prior all-time high, it really does have to build out a lot of support at these, at these prior levels. I would dubiously speculate that one day Bitcoin will have a market cycle peak, not this year. Let me be clear. I don't think it's going to be this year. I've said forever. I think we're having lengthening cycles. Hopefully most of you guys know that. But one day it'll have a market cycle peak, probably well over 100K, and, and everyone's going to be super excited and then, and then thinks it's going to go to 500K. I mean, it could make it to 200K, don't get me wrong, but people are probably going to start calling for 500K or a million dollars. But what's probably going to happen is we'll probably have a, a major correction, and then we're probably going to have to spend a year going down, a year or two going sideways, and then, so that we can ultimately go to the, to the next level after that. But for now, what we notice is that between two cubed and two to the four, we spent a lot of time in there. What if we were to note these by zero for going sideways in it or the market cycle bottom, one for not really spending much time in it, right? So zero, one, zero, spent a lot of time in this one. We did not spend a lot of time between two to the four and two to the five, right? So one, did we spend a lot of time between two to the five to two to the six? Zero, okay? What's the next one? One. What does that mean? If this analysis is to be taken to the bank, which I guarantee you there's not a single banker that'll cash this thing in, 
But if it were to be taken to the bank, what it might imply is that we probably won't, we might, we really might not spend that much time between two to the six and two to the seven. So what I'm suggesting is that compared to the amount of time Bitcoin spent between two to the five to two to the six, I'm speculating that at least on the way up, we might not spend nearly as much time between two to the six and two to the seven. We basically spent an entire year between two to the five and two to the six. Okay, so what do I think? What do I ultimately think? Well, as I've said, I think this cycle is going to go beyond 2021. I know, I know a lot of people think this is blasphemy for me to suggest that Bitcoin might not have a market cycle peak in December for whatever reason. I don't know why. It's only had one market cycle peak in December. The one in 2013 was technically in November. And of course, being technically correct is in fact the best way to be correct. Some people say, well, it's the end of November. But yeah, it was the end of November. But so what? It was in November. The one in 2011 was in June. Okay, it wasn't close to December. So we had June, we had November, we had December. I know it is somewhat blasphemous to suggest that it might not be in December for some reason, but as I've said for years, I've said since 2019, we've been talking about lengthening cycles. I think we're gonna go beyond 2021. Now, we basically spent the better part of the last year between two to the five and two to the six. Now, does that mean we're gonna go to two to the seven instantaneously? Probably not. I mean, even if you look at the, the, the time it took to go from say, 16 to 32 K, it still took a couple of months, right? It still took a couple of months. And while we didn't spend very much time between two squared and two to the cube, we were here, you know, for about 70 days. We also did have a, another test of it down here for another month or so. We spent a, a, probably another month right here, but most of the time was spent between two cube, two to the four, and then two to the five, two to the six. So what does that mean? Well, what if, what if whenever we break through two to the six, by the way, two to the six is 64K. And you guys know we've been spending a lot of time in 64K. I think it's interesting that Bitcoin's been spending a lot of time between 64K, which is two to the six, and 32K, which is two to the five. Okay, it's spent most of the last year in that range. So what could I see as a potential path forward? Well, I, I could imagine a scenario where we eventually break above two to the six, a 64K, we're already technically above it but it could still be a while before we really get pushing past $100,000. And then when we move past it, probably gonna take more than a couple months to, to navigate this range, but I don't necessarily think we're gonna spend a year in that range like we did in this range. So it could look something like, you know, at some point we break through, I don't know when uh, we move up and then maybe we have a long distribution phase up here, okay? And then we ultimately come back down. And I, I would argue that, that it's more than likely that this is probably going to be somewhere between two to the seven and two to the eight is, is there's a decent chance that's the market cycle peak. I've always said, I think the market cycle peak is above hundred K. I think it, it certainly could be above 128 K. So perhaps that is what we should be looking for somewhere above 128 K. But I would also get super skeptical of it going above two to the eight because the reason, one of the reasons is because if you take the, the market cycle ROI as measured from the halving, if it did go to 256, that means it's essentially experiencing the same returns that it did last cycle as measured from the halving. Now, if you measure it from the market cycle bottom, we would have to go all the way up to 300K in order to experience the same returns we saw last cycle. So at this point in time, I, I would say that I, I do think the market cycle peak is above 100K ultimately. Uh, but again, I, I don't necessarily think that has to, I don't think we have to have a market cycle blow off peak in, in the next 48 days. You know, there, there are some, there are some people calling for, you know, 300 K by the end of the year. But I mean, basically Bitcoin would just have to go straight up like this, you know, for, for the next five or six weeks. And I, I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, could it go up? Yeah, I mean, we could easily go 70K, 80K, we could do that, but are, are we gonna go to 300K in, a, in, in six weeks? Almost surely not, okay, almost assuredly not. So I look at this and I say, we had a market cycle bottom over here, some sideways action, but not really, not a whole lot. Straight up, straight down, straight back up, long consolidation between two to the third, two to the four, straight up between 60 and 32K, long consolidation between two to the five, two to the six. Potentially, whenever we break through it, we'll have a, a nice rally up to the next level, which probably would take a few months. When I, when I say it happens quickly, it could still take a few months. This one took about two months. I would speculate that the next, the next move from 64 to 128 
could take even longer potentially, but maybe not. I mean, it could still happen in two months, but I would I would be conservative and say two months minimum. Um, more probably, you know, it's more likely you're going to take you know three to six months or something whenever whenever the break happens. Um, and then from there, I, I'm looking for a potential market cycle peak somewhere somewhere up in this region. And then if if you're curious, what I would expect after that, I you know whenever this does break and we also ultimately come up here. Whenever it breaks and we come back down, we're probably going to then have to really work to, 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 to move past these levels. Right? We're going to probably spend a long time consolidating in the future between 64 and 128. I'll we'll probably spend a long time between 128 and 256 in the next cycle. But in this, first, in, in this current cycle, we might not spend nearly as much time between 64 and 128, maybe a few months, and then, and then maybe another few months between 128 to 256 followed by a, a, a move back down, uh, more likely a bear market at some point, which I know people don't like to hear it, but unfortunately they do exist. And honestly, they're good for the market. They have a way of fleshing out a lot of the garbage in the space. And believe me, there is a lot of garbage in the space. Okay, so that's sort of what I'm looking for. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I thought another thing that was interesting is that two to the eight, uh, it does actually have some, some significance in, in computer science, right? Uh, as many of you guys know, each bit, I, I sort of drew these in zeros and ones. So each bit can either be a zero or a one. Okay, this is sort of how, you know, how a lot of, um, uh, you know, I mean, at least if you're in computer science, right, you're, you're fully familiar with bits and whatnot and how many bits are in a byte and, and whatnot. For instance, there's there's eight bits in a byte. We're, we're getting a little carried away at this point, but there's eight bits in a byte. But What's interesting is, you know, if the, the reason why 256 is important is, is you can have basically two options here, right? Zero or one. And, and the way that the computers work is when you have, say, two options, right? Zero or one, okay? And we know that eight is the smallest amount of memory, right? Eight is the smallest amount of memory that can be accessed by, by say, any, any specific program, eight bits, two, which is the base we're using here, two to the power eight is 256, right? That's 256. And that's what a lot of computers work in. So, I mean, a lot of them go from zero to 255, okay? So 255 is the highest number a byte can represent. Uh, you might say, well, didn't you say 256? It is 256, but zero is included in that. So zero takes up a space, so from zero to 255. So I thought that was interesting. I know some of you guys might be wondering what I'm smoking at this point. But again, I did, I, I, my undergrad was in math. My PhD was in nuclear engineering. Um, and, and so I, I, do, I do somewhat like this, these types of things, even though it feels like a different life at this point for me. Um, I, I do like these kinds of things. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. We also do a premium list at intothecryptoverse.com if you want to know how I am navigating these markets. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.